Hello everyone, welcome to CNC Labs. My name is Chad Priddle. Uh, today we'll be going over a product review of a MicroTik 10 gig router slash switch. A uh, really cool device packed with a lot of features uh, for not a lot of money. Uh, and definitely think that you should check it out. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so this router switch combo is made by uh, MicroTik. Um, it's a model number CRS305-1G-4S uh, plus IN. Um, basically has a, a config ETH port, and then you have your four SFP plus uh, ports for uh, up to 10 gig transfer. Um, you can mount it to the wall. The whole thing is basically a heat sink. When you do have active transfers, uh, this, this can get pretty hot. Um, you have two DC ports uh, for redundancy. Uh, when you purchase this, it only comes with one. Uh, you have a grounding screw, and then you even have uh, kind of a strain relief for your DC uh, power. You got LED lights for power and the uplinks, reset button, and your ports, and that's about it. So why would you need this? Why would, why would someone want this? Well, if you have a, um, a situation where you have maybe two network switches that have SFP plus ports that run 10 gig, um, you can daisy chain them. But for something this small in more of a, a small office um, or a home lab scenario where you would use this as an ETH port for your uplink to your rest of your network. And then you would have a uh, 10 gig link on a NAS or a server with uh, ESXi, um, or maybe you have a, um, a PC that you're doing a lot of video editing and that also has a NIC with 10 gig. And so what you're trying to do is you're just bridging the connections between the devices that actually care about 10 gig speeds, but you can also use it to attach to the rest of your network to access the internet and your gateway and all that stuff. Um, and so if you're not familiar with SFP, um, they sell basically these uh, different transistors, uh, different models. Uh, some of them are not compatible with all of them, um, but they're basically just uh, little chips and they power up and you basically, these are a fiber link so you'd have a little fiber cable. You could go, uh, you know, 500 feet if you wanted to. Um, or they make these transistors where you slide it in and it's basically a female, uh, kind of like an RJ45 for a Cat6 cable. And then your third option, which is more for uh, short distances in a server room where you would use a DAC cable or direct attach copper cable. They're a little pricey uh, when you get into the lengths, but imagine um, a server rack where you're just daisy chaining these switches within uh, a couple feet. And so those are really simple. And they're basically pre-manufactured cords. Um, so that's about it. Uh, very happy with this. Uh, got it from Amazon. I remember researching this about a year ago and it was like $109. Uh, and it was kind of just gaining some steam. And um, as of today, it's $136 and almost 700 reviews, a lot of positive reviews for the price uh, if you're trying to get into 10 gig. So um, that's about it. Uh, let me go ahead and fire this up and we will check out the GUI. So after booting up the uh, switch, you can uh, connect it to your computer through uh, a network cable and you're gonna wanna go into your um, your LAN and automatically uh, configure your IP address to be on the same subnet. So you're going to be at 192.168.88.100. And then your gateway is going to be 192.168.88.1. And then once you apply those settings, open up a browser and you're going to go to 192.168.88.1. And then you're gonna have a login screen and the default username is admin and the password's blank. And once you're logged in, 
you can then see this. I've already pre-configured it with a separate IP address and changed the password. So um, this is the GUI. This is a uh, uh, Mikrotix uh, router OS. They also have a switch OS and they sell a lot of different hardware. And so this GUI is gonna have a lot of options that you'll see on the left-hand side that we you, that we can't even use with this device. Um, so you can have to obviously like with wireless, you know, this isn't a Wi-Fi router, so you can't really do anything with this. Um, but go to interfaces and you can see uh, right now it's, it's in bridge mode. Um, basically, it's just gonna act as a switch and you have this little quick setup here and you can either uh, boot it into a router mode or bridge mode. Um, for most people, I would assume they're gonna be using this as just a 10 gig switch. Um, and so you go back to the main dashboard and this is very extensive. Uh, you can set up VLANs, uh, change your NAT, uh, QoS, uh, really this is very extensive. Um, and obviously there's firmware flashing, uh, backups, a lot of actual uh, really cool tools built into this uh, for pinging different uh, devices on the network. Um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of this just because of just how extensive it really is, but it just kind of touches on uh, for the money. Um, I would say this is close to kind of like a PFSense box where you just, you know, or, or, um, or WWDNS uh, where you just have very uh, open software to configure this thing to, to no end. Um, and then also, of course, there's a terminal, uh, CLI commands. And if you look up this company, they actually have really good um, manuals also. So um, that's it for, for this configuration. Um, and I hope you enjoy the video.